Okay, welcome, welcome to our lecture about, about analog emissions in the spirit of new space era. My name is Dr. Agata Kowodziejczyk and I will be uh, telling you more about analog emissions, what we do within a AATC, within Euromoon Mars, uh, together here with all these partners that I'm representing today. Uh, so, not on the camera. So our goal is today to reveal, to give you some insight about what we are doing and why we are doing, because I think this is more important. Personally, I'm the owner of AATC, uh, which is Analog Astronaut Training Center. I'm also assistant professor at Space Technology Center, AGH University of Science and Technology. And uh, of course, I'm also uh, contributing in the several IAF uh, committees, uh, trying to, to make something to this world, to make something for human spaceflight. This is our mission, not only mine, but many people who are here. So let's start. Uh, let's start. What is new space era? New space era means that we want to have access to human space flight, not only via governments, not only via political um, pathways. We want to have a free access to space, to human space flight. Um, we are believing in a commercial space flight, space tourism, you may name it as you like, but the most important thing is to be in space as a human, as a human being, not only as a trained, very well trained governmental person. And I, of course we have nothing against astronauts, this is a super, we would dream to, to apply for a real astronautic program, but we know that we are too many and there is a limited capacity for uh, being a governmental astronaut. So how we do this? Well, our main aim is to open this possibility to everyone. And now we can say that we already uh, performed 51 missions um, from 2018. So it is not, not, a sh not long time and uh, quite many missions. Each mission we try to be better, we have a bigger crew to take over, to take care of the quality of the missions. So every mission is better and better. We believe that in two years we can be really good and I will try to show you what we are doing. Now we are, we have already representations of nearly all continents in the world beside Antarctica, but we are planning mission to Antarctica. Maybe with Brazilian people, for sure with Colombian people, we already have some collaborations. So, uh, here you can see uh, how many people were already in our habitat. This is not super updated because still missions are going on. So, at the end of the year, we will have updated, updated number. What we can say, as you can see here, there are several crews from several countries participating in our missions. After such mission, usually these people go to space sector or continue their work. Each crew, first of all, needs to prepare the mission scenario. Each crew needs to prepare their mission patch, their mission objectives, which are technical, scientific, and public outreach mission objectives. So we try to teach people in this uh, project, which is international project, we try to teach people all these things, science, technology, engineering, education, public outreach, many, many things you can learn within this internship. But first, maybe we should start uh, with explaining what is analog mission. Very often when I am speaking to professors at university, then uh, they, they don't understand what means analog. And for us, analog means analogous to a real space, space mission. For example, analogous to real space mission at International Space Station, or in the future, lunar base, or in the future, Martian base. So we estimate all scenarios, how it could be, and we try to be analogous to this situation. We can divide analog missions into three types. One is, as you can see on the slide, controlled field campaign that you are 
controlling people in a, some environment, you measure, collect all measurements from environment and from personal uh, parameters, physiological parameters. So then you can control all procedures, you can control all things. Uh, of course, control is remote. It means that you need to have a special mission control center in order to control the field campaigns. But now we only, <laughs> we only have um, limited controlled field campaigns because of um, complexity. To control such missions, you need to have a very many sensors, very many um, controlling devices, and it is quite hard to obtain. So, far more easier is to organize open field campaigns where the task is very simple. For example, deploy and um, assemble some equipment, make it as fast as possible, as high quality as possible. So we are operational oriented, not we are really fully controlled. And this is interesting, but what we like, of course, we like to have control. We like to give people very nice feedback. In order to give feedback, we need to have something, some base, how we can evaluate the performance of the mission. And therefore, we organize fully controlled analog missions inside in isolation. As I told you, also, in order to get a very high quality um, analog missions in isolation, we try to collect uh, various samples to the habitat that analog astronauts can work with some really interesting stuff. And for example, here, our, um, our one of analog astronauts went to Polar Station in Hornsund in, in uh, Svalbard, in Norway, and collected uh, samples for analog astronauts, which we will work very soon uh, in the habitat. These days, there was a second polar mission. We collected more soil for more analog astronauts to make standardized kind of experiments inside the habitat. Also, when we say about field campaigns, I will go back to field campaigns before I start with the uh, analog missions in isolation. We designed uh, two types of uh, spacesuits. One is for land operations, so-called land EVAs, extravehicular activities. This is called LEM suit. It is fully pressurized and um, very interesting to teach how, how to operate in a such suit. Another suit we design now, I cannot show the, the photo, is for uh, underwater EVA trainings that we also organize. And here you also see that we are organizing several, several field campaigns for students. I will tell it in a moment. First of all, when people are coming to our analog missions, there is always possibility, of course, we need to plan it in advance to make not only one, one um, training, but to make several trainings in a row. So once you come to Poland, you can make several things at once. And first you start with analog mission, then with diving and for example, skydiving. Very many crews, they, they try to organize time in Poland very efficient and to do as much as possible. But everyone, <laughs> everyone is doing something before the analog mission. So we ask our analog astronauts to come before the mission for pre-training. And pre-training is kind of hard, it can be hard. We don't say exactly what we are going to do to our analog astronauts, so if you hear this, you will be more prepared. And for example, here we have a task uh, which is uh, hypothermia uh, efficiency. We try to see who has uh, the strongest, um, yes, uh, <laughs> power and here we see the the person who made the record actually uh, for our hypothermia training um, Sarah our analog astronaut is here we see here also Kiran <laughs> and she also had to survive somehow also uh, what we do several our students again uh, here is Sarah uh, we are trying to do uh, very extreme experiments considering hard parameters. 
heart rate values, all types of parameters related with circulatory system. And in order to do this, of course, we need to monitor astronauts in a very controlled situation. For example, here, before the mission, now it is, it is like a standard. Before each mission, we collect data from a MOVI sens sensors and we put people into cryo chamber, which is minus 120 degrees of Celsius. And we try to see how the heart works afterwards, how these um, astronauts they perform, analog astronauts they perform. Also, um, after cryo chamber, after uh, survival trainings, after these uh, hypothermia trainings, everything, once everyone is passing this, we go to the habitat. And in the habitat, there is a lot of work. Everyone who was in the habitat knows that it is hard. Uh, yesterday, there was a lecture about sleep deprivation. They said that five hours is already sleep deprivation. Well, for us, five hours is a super nice sleep. Um, so if you think that on the mission in the habitat, you will sleep, no, you are coming here for the mission, not for sleeping. This is not a hotel. We like really extreme, extreme conditions. So from these uh, last, last two missions, we started hypoxia trainings inside the habitat. So again, we use uh, several bands on our chest, several parameters. It is like a very uh, nice physiological uh, data collection. And people are running not only like on the gym regularly, we have one hour of gym training. Now we take 20 minutes from this one hour for hypoxia training. So every day people are seeing a narrowing view of <laughs> and everything is getting black and everything is really interesting. People really like it, by the way. I don't know why. They said this was the best in the mission that when I saw this, this, this tunnel of light <laughs> when I was running on the gym. So of course, everything is under control. We have medical doctor now fully operating in the mission control center to control if everything is correct, yes? And uh, when I'm saying about control, it's um, not only people that are trying to observe everything. Of course, we have several sensors. And now the habitat, uh, the habitat environmental data are collected by NetAtmo um, sensors which are measuring humidity, blood, uh, humidity, CO2 levels, temperature, energy consumption, noise, um, acoustic noise, uh, amplitude, light intensity, and this, uh, these sensors are located in 3D, so they are not only um, one, one sensor in one module, but there are several sensors in each module on one meter height and two meters height. In order to do this, we have a really nice view map of all environmental sensors in 3D. So it is very unique. Of course, we like, and Anna, our analog astronauts, they love emergency simulations. They are all the time waiting when finally Mission Control Center will do some emergency. We are preparing our analog astronauts for emergency and they know they don't know the time, they don't know what kind of emergency simulation they will expect. Mission Control Center that is here, we are really thinking hard how to make the emergency the best as possible, the most real as possible, and of course the most standardized as possible because we want to say which crew performed better in emergency simulation. We try to make them as much stressed as possible. We try to make them as much frustrated sometimes. You know, we are really trying to make this not a simulation. It is a real feeling of emergency. This is what we are trying to do. And of course, everything is kind of safe. But we don't know how people react to many things. We collect from each mission to another mission basic parameters. This is because we want to standardize mission. This is number one. So 
we want to collect the same type of data from one crew to another. Why? Because at the very, very end, we want to have an idea how population of humans, not only the best heroes, the most uh, fit people in the world, the most intelligent people in the world, how they behave in such situations. We want to see all people, we want to screen all people. Why? Again, it is in because of new space era. We want everyone to have access to space, not only the heroes, yes? And we try to observe what you need to improve to be able to fly to space. So this is our main idea to collect data. Here you see basic parameters. Um, we have here five crews. Um, and you, you can see that uh, they, they are collecting uh, several data like uh, water distribution, water bilance. So uh, drinking water and <laughs> drinking water, um, removing water from the body. Uh, we collect body temperature, heart rates, and many, many, many other parameters that are standardized. So we are trying to collect all this data to see how much crew ate the food, how much, how much water uh, is needed for some crew. Some crews, they are super, uh, like, um, not prepared. They don't feel that this is a simulation of analog mission and they are overusing technical water, and later they have no water. So we have many problems with this, but people learn that this kind of, of a simulator of spaceship is not a real house, it's not a real hotel. You really need to think, if I have enough food, if I have enough water and technical water. This is kind of important. I told you about sport. During our analog missions, we have mandatory one hour of training for each analog astronaut. I told you already, 20 minutes goes to hypoxia training. And we try to collect data from all days. How you proceed? What is the distance that you ran on the treadmill? What is the distance that you made on a cycling, um, uh, cycling device? What our calories burned, and so on and so on. Many parameters we collect also. We try to observe how your body changes. Of course, one week is very short time to measure bioimpedance, but we already can see some interesting parameters. For example, biological age is changing. Sometimes people are getting older within this one week, like 20 years older because of metabolic changes. They are shocked and some people are getting younger. So it is always like surprise. Oh, my body reacts like this to these kind of conditions. And again, these people learn about their body, learn about their limits. And I think this is very important. Uh, we are measuring also sleep quality. Even this sleep, I told you it is not five hours is super nice but we are trying to measure the quality of sleep. And usually people are sleeping very well in the habitat, even there are several uh, LEDs beeping, you know, there are several noises from ventilation. Everything is quite uh, noisy, but still because they are sleep deprived, they can sleep like babies. And unfortunately, we are messing up with circadian rhythms. Unfortunately, because people suffer from that, but this is kind of important to see that in space you may have also problems with your circadian rhythms. And real astronauts, they really have problems with circadian rhythms. We want to show you how you would feel in space station if you were real astronaut. Here we have some comparison between circadian rhythms in uh, our analog missions. I know, I need to see slides. <laughs> Maybe I will see it, then, then, oh, then it will be okay. So in order to see uh, circadian dreams, we try to compare in uh, control uh, groups how this is changed, how this is different. And especially we are now, we, we try to 
develop new tools, new devices to facilitate uh, work in the habitat. So we design uh, new applications, for example, for uh, subjective time perception. We also use several machines, uh, several different tools that you can meet in uh, regular laboratories on this planet. For example, we have uh, simulators of mi microgravity. And now we have three types of simulators. We have 2D clinostats, 3D clinostats, and random positioning machines. We play a lot with kombucha. <laughs> Everyone likes kombucha <laughs> or hates it, but in the habitat, there is no chance. At least we are not asking you to eat it. We are only asking you to drink it and measure your pH of your urine after this. Because kombucha pH is usually 2, so we expect that your urine pHD will be 5. And most of cases is like this. But kombucha is not only drinking, it is also uh, nanocellulose, which we really like. And we have several experiments to, um, to do some material out of nanocellulose. For example, here you see we tried to 3D print uh, nanocellulose with a regol lunar regolith simulant. Only these two, uh, two, para two materials we wanted to take, so something what we have on the moon and something what we have and cultivate in the base, in the lunar base. And uh, here you see, so we simply smashed this nanocellulose until very, very, very homogeneous substance. And we mixed it with uh, cellulose, cellulose samples, and we tried to see how good it is for 3D printing. And this work was done also in collaboration with AGH, University of Science and Technology. Here you see our last mission, just uh, as analog astronauts came out from the habitat last week. They tried to create a composite materials out of kombucha using uh, different, uh, like a Kevlar um, fibers, polycarbon fibers. And they tried to see if polymerization process of nanocellulose can 